Howdy folks, John here. In today's video, we're going to be answering a question that I and several others have had regarding the eSky 300 V2, and that is, can you bind it to multi-protocol OpenTX radio? As you can see, the answer is a definite yes. If you're wondering how to do it, let's get right to it. So the first thing we're going to do is select a relatively simple model. It could be an airplane, just something simple. You don't need pitch or throttle curves with one of these, of course. So I am going to select a little fixed pitched micro that I've already got. And it's going to be the eSky Airwolf. Again, it can be any simple model. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to duplicate it because I don't want to modify the actual eSky one. We want to create a brand new model. So we're going to pick that. Low rates, better low, acro mode. And we're going to go into model setup and we are of course going to change the name. And I've already uploaded an image file for the 300 V2. Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm going to change my timer right now to five minutes. And the next thing on here that we're going to check off, which is quite important, is extended limits. And I'll get into the reason why when we're setting up our channel outputs. And then the only other thing in our model setup that we have to set, of course, is our RF protocol. So we're going to be using the multi-module. And we have to get to eSky. Now there's several eSkys. There's actually three of them, eSky Standard, eSky 150, and eSky V2. And it defaults to 150 V2, but this is the protocol we want. If you haven't updated your multi-protocol module in a while, you may not find that uh, protocol available. This is running version 13177. I've actually got a separate video on that. Uh, I'll link to it below in the description or up in the little card doodad if you've never updated your multi-protocol module firmware, super easy. And that's all we have to do in model setup. We don't do anything in heli setup, don't do anything in flight modes. Uh, our inputs, again, this was just all pre-configured uh, for that little eSky. You can set your inputs up however you want. I like having my dual rates on my input side. I went over this in my OpenTX Heli setup video, which probably a few people have seen by now, but uh, nothing exciting there. We've just got our stick inputs all programmed. Okay, our mixes. This is where it took a little while figuring this out. This little Heli is uh, really mixed up as far as mixes go. Channel one is actually elevator. Okay, channel two is throttle. Channel three is aileron. Is it? Channel four is rudder. Channel five isn't even used. So I'm just gonna delete this. And channel six is our throttle release or throttle hold. We're going to select our throttle hold switch for that. On my OpenTX radios, I've got it set to this switch, but uh, on most, it's over on, on the uh, left side there. And now our outputs. This is why we had to have extended limits. This took a while for me to figure out why I couldn't get it to arm but that's because I didn't have enough channel travel. So this little eSky 300 V2 seems to work at 110% output in both directions. That's why you need to use extended limits. I'm just gonna go through all these real quickly. And direction pointing to the right on all of them, on all your channels and centering point, keep it at 1500 for all of them. And I'm just gonna do the rest of these. 
Okay, and channel 6 is the one deviation from 110. You want to set this to 120% in both directions. Otherwise, you won't get the uh, throttle to arm. Again, channel 5 is not used. That's why it's sitting still at 100. Okay, so just confirm channel 1, 2, 3, 4, all at minus 110 to plus 110. Channel 5 isn't used. Channel 6, we want negative 120 and positive 120 for the channel outputs. All channel directions are normal. None of them are reversed. Again, all centered at 1500. Okay, let's bind this thing. As I demoed in the eSky 300 V2 review, uh, this will automatically go into bind mode as soon as you plug it in if it doesn't see a transmitter signal. And once in bind mode, the green LED on the right side will be flashing very quickly. And in our radio, we've got to go into our model screen here, and we are going to go into bind. And there we go. It's bound. Just turned our little switch to the green position so the gyros can uh, initialize. Forward side click, left and right side click. Got our dual rates set up. And we will take throttle hold off and see if it spools up. Everything seems to be working. Let's just check, check our tail rotor direction as well. Just make sure it's yawing in the right direction. Giving it left and giving it right. All looks good. So with it all bound up, uh, we're going to go for a test flight. But before doing that, I just want to talk about dead band. These things have just enormous amounts of dead band. Meaning when you move your stick, it takes a very long time for the heli to react. Again, these, you know, they're meant to be flowing with that little cheapy toy radio that's got, you know, those things don't have great channel centering, so they have to build a lot of dead band into the flight controller. And when you set it up to a proper computerized radio then, where you've got really good stick centering, you know, you'll move the stick back and forth and nothing will happen for quite a while. So you've, you know, you're gonna be flying in this null zone where you don't get any reaction. I've already done a video on the little eSky F-150 V2, how you use a special dead band eliminating curve for that. I will link to it below in the description and up in the card doodad, but I'm just gonna activate it on our aileron channel here so you can see how much it improves it. So you'll see here, just watch the blades again. I'm moving the stick, moving, and it doesn't react. So, you want to go into your curves. Now, I've already made the dead band curve. This is what it looks like. It's a custom curve, meaning you can move the points. It's a four point curve. And I've got the points at minus 100, minus five off center, plus five off center, and plus 100. And then the actual outputs of the points, minus 100, of course, minus 16, that's the amount of dead band and plus 16, and then of course 100. So that's what you'd want your curve to look like. So you're gonna to want to put this dead band curve on your elevator, aileron, and rudder. But I'm just gonna do it on the aileron so you can see how that curve improves all that dead band. So we'll just go into that, we'll edit it, and we're gonna use the custom curve. So there it is, our dead band curve. And you can see as soon as I start moving the stick now, those blades are reacting. So I'm just gonna add the uh, dead band curve to my elevator and my rudder channel, and we'll go for a flight. It's raining out, so we've gotta do this in the garage. And here we go.
Very nice. I could probably go even a little bit higher on that dead band illumination. It's not bad, but it's still just a little bit vague off center stick. So you might even be able to go more than 16 points, maybe 20 points. I've got it in really low dual rate now, which is nice inside. There's full cyclic forwards and backwards. That's at 50%. And left and right. And here's 50% on yaw rate. Very tame yaw rate. Not bad at all. Definitely better than the little radio it comes with. You can really fine tune the feel for how you want it to behave. Within the limitations of a little fixed pitch micro, of course. So if you were wondering if you can set your 300 V2 up on a uh, multi-protocol OpenTX radio, no problems at all. That's how you go about doing it. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy flights. We'll see you next time.